This is a historic opportunity for the aboriginals. Um, it's the first time that the federal government has sat down with the traditional uh, government. Now that is a real breakthrough for them, and they know that. One of the significant things, and you heard it in the piece, was nation to nation, that the rule of law in Canada does not apply to those of us living in Six Nations. It's, you know, it's the Six Nations that talks about nation to nation. It's not a phrase that, that I have ever used uh, in our discussions with them. I do uh, recognize that that is their view. And what has to occur over these discussions is that we come to some agreement about what nation to nation means. What does it mean to you? Well, it means to me that there is an umbrella. There is an umbrella country, it's called Canada. Uh, within Canada, uh, there are communities who have never reached a settlement on some ancient issues. This is one of them. It doesn't mean that it is a nation um, that the federal government has no uh, control over. The province and the the federal government is saying, let's keep negotiating. So this is why Caledonia is so important to, I think, so many First Nations people. Here they are flouting the rule of law and yet still being able to dialogue. That's a very interesting precedent to set within the country. That part of it, that narrow part of it, is not a precedent. Um, one of the things that the Aboriginal people believe, and I'm, I'm reluctantly come to the same conclusion, and that is that until there is a protest, until they put down a marker, they don't get anywhere with the federal government or with the provincial government. Um, things drag on and on, and on, you know, and that once it gets off the front pages, uh, they worry that the negotiators and the political will go away. So even and, you admit and, uh, that without protest they don't get any action. What has happened in the past is that if the well-intentioned minister disappears, and there have been others before, then um, uh, the aboriginals believe that the political will goes Stops. away. I have reassured the group that I am there for the long term as long as it is essential to talk, to try and come to a conclusion. So what, I mean, from your point of view, what's the go forward plan? I mean, do you, how long can this go on for? Well, I think first of all, there had to be trust built um, between the uh, Aboriginal community and those of us who are sitting around the table with them. This is what we want to make the uh, make sure that the Cal Caledonia community understands. Caledonians think they could lose huge chunks of their town, their mm -hmm. city. Mm -hmm. That doesn't create a lot of trust. People, well, it depends. How do you balance what the you two sides? By because lose. I mean, I you know, you balance the two sides by building trust in little ways, working towards solutions in bite-sized pieces, and then you, you move towards bigger picture. I mean, there have been, if you look at the self-government in the Seashell Peninsula, for example, there's, you know, private property rights still exist there. Nobody's house was torn down. So Judge Marshall's decision to stop negotiating until the law has been obeyed for you is clearly a serious setback. It's the wrong track. Now is not the time uh, for a confrontation and an enforcement and a line in the sand. And it's not that the rule of law is not important, it is. And he emphasized that and I have no argument with that. Um, but please let us do our job. What could this do to other land claims issues across the country? How does this ripple outward? What I see is that if we can come to some agreement here, if we can resolve some of these issues, if other groups across Canada see some progress 
and see a process that works, then maybe we won't have to have these awful confrontations to get things started.